There's one. That one was easy. Welcome to the channel guys and today I'm working on my 95 Suburban again and what I'm doing is unfortunately going back a couple steps with the lift install on this truck. <laughs> You see, when I was installing this lift, there was a point in the directions that mentioned the alignment tabs that are stuck in the frame there. And those tabs need to be knocked out according to the directions on pre-94 models, if applicable. I put in a call to Rough Country who makes the lift that I installed, and the guy asked me, well, is your truck a pre-94? And I said, no. And he said, then you leave them in. Well, upon taking the truck to the alignment shop, the guy immediately tried to do the alignment and said, hey, there's tabs in there that need to come out. We can't align it without the tabs out, which is kind of exactly what I thought would happen. But according to the directions and rough country, I was supposed to leave those in. So I don't know. I don't know much about alignment, but I knew at the time, man, I'm putting this all back together and I'm probably going to have to take it back out again and get these tabs knocked out. And here we are today. We're doing that and uh, hopefully it'll go okay. I did buy a tool from Harbor Freight. I ended up going to Harbor Freight and picking up an air hammer. This thing was only $9.99. Actually cheaper than that because I had a 20% off coupon. I also picked up some of their extra bits. I was hoping they had more of a blunt tip one, but this one might be perfect. So I think I have everything taken apart that I need to in order to get to those alignment tabs. And I just wanted to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Taking a look right here where the control arm bolts to the frame, you can see the outside hole here is pill shaped, which is what we want. And you can see here the other side of the hole has the tabs. Looking at it from another angle, we can see that those tabs are perforated. So I should be able to just punch those right out. And once that's done, it'll be the pill shape, just like on the other side. It's not a humongous job, but it is something that I could have taken care of during the install of the lift. Also, if you've ever been wondering just how this alignment system works, well, it basically goes like this. You can see here we have a washer that is placed off center of the bolt. The bolt does have a flat spot in it to keep that washer in place. And when you turn this bolt, that washer tells it where to go. Looking here on the inside, you can see as I turn it, the bolt moves inside and outside. So it gives you a pretty good amount of adjustability. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna try is to knock it out with a punch. In this case, it's just a six inch, three eighths uh, ratchet extension. I'm gonna use a hammer and the extension. We're gonna see it's possible to just simply quickly punch this out. Okay, I am, I am getting it. Oh, the other side just fell right out. That was weird. Okay, so there you can see on the left side we have the tab that's not out yet. And on the right side, the other tab just literally fell out. So I think these tabs must have just been somewhat tacked in there and they are actually not part of the frame. So it shouldn't be a big deal for me to grab a pair of pliers and just yank that other one out. Okay, so there we have it. Both tabs have been knocked out. It looks like they were tacked just on the very edge, which you can kind of see right there. But now our hole is exactly the way it needs to be in order to provide for alignment. Now I just have to work on this side, but it shouldn't take long at all. There's one, that one was easy. Here are those four alignment tabs and they were actually very easy to get out. I now have the bolt back in without the alignment tabs and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when you turn the head of the bolt. So I'm gonna turn this bolt to the left and it's going to bring out the control arm. Did you see that? I'm gonna turn it back to the right and it'll bring the control arm in towards the vehicle. And that is being simply accomplished by this washer. I now have everything put back together and the truck is under its own weight. And what's interesting is if I put my level up against the rim, we can see that that bubble is right there in the center. Now I know this isn't a perfect way of figuring this out, but it is pretty close. So basically what was happening before is the top of the tire, if you're staring at the truck, was leaned out. I think that's negative camber. And what I just did is adjusted it all the way as far as those tabs would allow me to. And now my tire seems to be perfectly straight up and down. Let's hope that's good enough. And just to show you what we started with, here we are on the passenger side and this is exactly what the driver's side looked like. And you can see the top of the tire is actually pushed out pretty far. So if I bring the bottom of the level out, we can see that bubble goes right into the middle, indicating that the level is 
perfectly straight up and down. You can see right there is just about the amount of adjustment we need to make this tire straight up and down. Now I could totally be wrong on all of this. I mean, this is what makes sense in my mind. This is what makes sense as far as what I was talking to the alignment guy about. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this passenger side, get it taken care of. We'll put it on the ground and see what it looks like. Here's all the alignment tabs and they were very, very easy to get out. I did not need that air hammer that I bought. All I had to use was a simple punch. That six inch extension was perfect and they came right out. They're really only attached by a little tack weld right there on the end. And now these wheels are darn near perfectly vertical. So I just got back from taking my truck out on a drive. I wanted to let these suspensions settle a little bit and that way when I take a measurement, it's a pretty accurate measurement. The interesting thing is, after this adjustment on these control arms, I actually lost some height in the front. From the floor to the bottom of the fender well, it used to be 37 and about 13 sixteenths to be exact. Now we're looking at about 37 and a quarter. On the rear, we have floor to the bottom of the fender well at 37 inches. So I could actually raise this up a little bit and still have a lot of adjustability on these upper control arms. And I think I'm actually going to do that. I want to get this front end at least about a half inch taller than it is in the rear. And that's really due to the possibility of more settling in the future. And also just to help with the overall look of the truck. So there's the torsion key bolt that I need to adjust. And I think I'm going to make two full turns. Okay. So I just made the adjustment with those torsion bolts. And now the measurement is about 37 and just over five eighths. I'm gonna take it around the block, hit some speed bumps so the suspension can settle again, and then we'll bring it back in the garage and measure and see where it settled out. All right guys, I'm back and uh, she has settled out right at about 37 and five eighths on both sides exactly from the floor to the bottom of the fender well. So I'm really happy that both sides are completely even. One's not, you know, a quarter of an inch taller than the other. They're literally exactly the same and that goes the same for the rear. The rear from the floor to the bottom of the fender well are literally exactly 37 inches, just about there, but both of them are even. So with those two turns we made on the torsion screw, I gained about, what, a half inch or so in the front, which is kind of a lot and I wasn't expecting it to be that much. The other thing is I noticed the suspension was just a little bit tighter on the speed bumps. I was kind of jumping off of the street. So I'm assuming that these torsion bars will kind of settle down after I drive it for a little bit. So I think I'm just gonna leave it right here. We'll get it aligned and call it good. So overall, I'm extremely happy with this look, and this is just on the stock tires. Once I get some 33s on here, I think it'll look amazing. Well, I'm Jimmy with One Road, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to check that description below for more information. Well, I will see you in the next one.